the applications of differentiation then. So these are optimizing problems. So you have to use your common sense in these and you have to read each question carefully because they're all going to be a wee bit different. So you could do examples from now until next year and the exam, in the exam they could still throw up something a wee bit different. So you have to just sort of take your time and read through them carefully. So our first one then, the sum of two numbers is 12. Find the minimum value of the sum of their squares. So let's call, let the two numbers then be X and Y. A and B, whatever you want, okay? So what do we know? We know first of all about their sum, and we know that that's 12. So we can say that X plus Y equals 12. And we want to find something to do with the sum of their squares. So I'm going to call it S, and it's going to be X squared plus Y squared. Okay? Now, it's talking about the minimum value. So that's your clue that it's a differentiation question, if it says minimum or maximum. Okay? Now, we can't differentiate this S the way it is because we've got X and Y. So what we have to do is to look at this equation here and rearrange that so we can write that y equals 12 and then I'm going to bring the x across minus x. So where we see y in the sum equation we're going to replace it with 12 minus x. So we get x squared plus 12 minus x squared. Square out your bracket. And tidy that up. Okay, so we can write the sum of the squares as 2x squared minus 24x plus 144. So then we want to find the minimum, so we'll have to differentiate. So we need to find ds by dx. Okay, so remember. It's S equals something with X's in it, so you're differentiating S with respect to X. And we're going to get 4X minus 24. So we want to find um, a minimum point. So that's like your turning point. So that means DS by DX has to equal zero. So we'll get... 0 equals 4x minus 24, so 24 equals 4x, which means x has to equal 6. So we found a value for x. What we'll have to do now is find the corresponding value for y, and then we also have to prove that it's a minimum. So you always have to prove that it's a minimum or a maximum, even if the question doesn't tell you to. So we had that x was 6. And we know that y equals 12 minus x, so that's 12 minus 6, so that's 6. And then we want to prove that it's a minimum. So we need d2s by dx squared. So our ds by dx was 4x minus 24. So differentiate again, we get 4. That's greater than naught. Therefore, it is a minimum. And then the question asks for the minimum value of the sum of the squares. So we need to actually find what the value is of our x squared plus y squared. So that's 6 squared plus 6 squared. So that gives you 72. Okay, so we're second one then. The owner of a stately home wishes to build a rectangular pond in his grounds. He wishes to surround the pond with tarmac path uh, one metre wide on three sides and three metre wide on one end to allow for seating, shown in the diagram below. So quite often these questions will involve something to do with um, area and volume of shapes. So express in terms of X and Y the surface area of the pond and the surface area of the tarmac. So the first one, nice and easy, the pond. So the um, area of the pond is just going to be x. 
y. Then for the tarmac, it's the whole area, take away the pond, will give you the surrounding tarmac. Okay, so we need to look at our diagram and we need to get a few more lengths. So we need to know this whole length and this whole width. So we've got a three meter, a Y and a one meter. So we have got Y plus four meters on this side. And then the width, we've got a meter, we've got the X for the pond and we've got another meter. So we've got X plus two meters. So the whole area is X plus two two upon y plus four and the pond we'll find out in the first part was x y so multiply out your brackets using foil x y plus four x plus two y plus eight and then with our minus x y and you can see the x y will cancel so we have four x plus two y plus eight is the area of the tarmac our next part then says the surface area of the pond is 100 metres squared. Show that the area of the tarmac is given by A equals 4X plus 200 over X plus 8. So let's take the first statement. So the surface area of the pond is 100. So we said in part 1 that the area of the pond was XY. So we can write that XY equals 100. And then the next part is asking about the area of the tarmac. So we find in part 2 that the area of the tarmac was the 4x plus 2y plus 8. So you can see that, right, we'll have to write this formula now all in terms of x. So I'm going to need to look at the one for pond. And I can say, well, y equals 100 over x. And now I'm going to substitute that in to our area 1. So a equals 4x plus 2 times 100 over x plus 8. So that's 4x plus 200 over x plus 8. Okay, so we've proved this formula. Now, quite often in an exam, you're given the formula to prove. If you can't prove it, if you're messing around and you've done something silly and you can't prove it, don't worry, you can still use that formula in the next part of the question. Okay, so you've got the formula there, so you can use it in the next part of the question. Try and obviously get uh, to show it, but if you can't, don't worry and move on. And our last part then, the owner wishes to minimize the amount of tarmac needed. Find the value of x, which will minimize the area of the tarmac, proving that it is a minimum. So there's your key word whenever it talks about minimum or maximum, you know it's something to do with differentiation. So we had that our area was 4x plus 200 over x plus 8. So write that in a format that we want. Um, so bring the x up. And now we can differentiate. So we're differentiating a with respect to x. So dA by dx. So we have 4 minus 200 x to the minus 2. So for the minimum. We know that dA by dx has to equal naught. So naught equals 4 minus 200 over x squared. Bring that minus 200 over x squared over to the left hand side to make it positive. Bring the x squared up and bring the 4 down. So that's 200 over 4, which is 50. So that means that x equals the square root of 50 which is 7.07 .07 and our units are meters. So minimize, find the value of x, we've done that bit, which will minimize proving that it's a minimum. So we need to prove now. So we need to find d2a by dx squared. So we're gonna differentiate again, differentiate four goes to zero. Minus 200 times minus two is 400 and then x to the minus three. Put in your value of x equals 7.07. .07. And we get that dTA by dx squared is 1.13. That's greater than naught. Therefore, we've proved that it is a minimum. 
And then sometimes in a question, you'll get um, a part at the end that asks you to use the values to find something else. So we've already found out that x was 7.07. .07, and now we'll have to find the dimensions of the pond. OK, so remember the pond was your wee x, y bit. So we need to find out y then as well. It was 100 over x, so that's 100 over 7.07. .07 which gives you 14.1 meters. And whenever you're writing dimensions as an answer, you should write them as like an X times a Y. So um, 7.07 .07 meters by 14.1 meters. They, that's our dimensions of our pond.